Tomorrow's my mom's birthday and I made her a special present, something that she absolutely loves, gumbo. It tastes great, it smells delicious, and most importantly, it is 100% healthy and low carb. So come on, let's see how we put it together. What I love about making soups and gumbos on a day like today where I've got 45 million things I gotta do, um, I just throw all the ingredients in the crock pot and eight to 10 hours later, boom, deliciousness happens. It's a wonder of today. Uh, so let me just give you an idea of what I'm putting in my healthy version of a gumbo. And if you're from Louisiana, I apologize because again, I'm trying to make this low carb. So I'm sure there's a few little things that you would suggest and please go ahead and do in the comments box. But anyway, I'm adding about a pound and a half of chicken thighs, boneless, skinless. I've already cut it up into two inch pieces. I'm adding two sausage links of Anjali sausage. Um, I've got a bowl here of about a cup of piece of diced onions, uh, green pepper, and celery. I have about 10 ounces here of okra. We don't have fresh okra in the stores right now and it's frozen, but that's okay. It's just going to go in a crock pot and it'll be just fine. I'm using a cup and a half of tomato sauce. And then um, my seasoning is going to be bay leaves. I'm using oregano, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and sea salt, and some minced garlic. Now, what is a little bit different about this dish is I'm making an actual roux fork. Traditional gumbos have a roux, which is basically flour and a fat that you put together. You make a dark sauce, um, or not a dark, dark sauce, but you make a dark roux. It adds flavor to it. Doesn't really thicken it um, unless you're doing a white roux. I've been learning about this this week as I try to piece together what I'm gonna use. It does add a few more carbs to this, so you can certainly leave it out. But what I'm using instead of traditional flour is I'm using coconut flour and almond flour with butter. And I'm going to put this in my pan that I've got up on the stove. I'm going to mix it all together to get it nice and dark for flavoring. And then I'm going to add my chopped up vegetables to it to get them a little bit coated before I throw them in the crock pot. The other ingredient I'm using is some um, chicken broth. So yes, it's a long list of ingredients. And then what's gonna go in the last 15 minutes is uh, shrimp I've got, and also some, I believe it's called, it's spelled file, but it's filet powder um, for gumbo. And this is basically ground sassafras leaves. Um, and what this does is this is your thickening agent, but it also adds flavor to the gumbo. It's 100% sassaf ground sassafras leaves, and that's what you want. You don't want any additives to it. So with that, I'm gonna start assembling this puppy. All right, I just moved my crock pot here so you can get an idea of how I put everything together. I'm gonna to add, go ahead, add the chicken pretty quickly. Boom, get that out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the sausage. The order really doesn't matter because I'm gonna mix everything together before I plug this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all the okra. I'm gonna add my tomato sauce. Now, with the tomato sauce, normally, as you know, I like to make my own tomato sauce, but the tomatoes weren't looking that good at the grocery store. So here's a little trick to save you some time if you're looking for um, a tomato sauce. Um, you always wanna find a very low carb sauce uh, that's out there and that's hard with tomato sauce. Usually it's about, uh, it can be anywhere from five to six carbs per quarter cup because they use a lot of added sugar. Um, I found this sauce at the grocery store um, and it's just Rao's homemade marinara sauce. The ingredients are all natural. There's no preservatives. Um, it's only three carbs um, per half cup with um, uh, one gram of fiber. So actually it's a really good low carb option for you. So again, when you're looking at the grocery store, you wanna make sure there's no added sugar to it. It's really hard to find, but always read the labels and always check the, um, the nutritional chart on the back too. So just sort of an idea that's a good product uh, you might wanna try, which is what I'm trying. So it's not really a tomato sauce, it's a marinara sauce, but it'll work. Um, it tastes really good and I really enjoy it. Go ahead, get that all in there. So I got the sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, seasoning, which is add that all in. And if you want it to, you can use, um, instead of oregano, you can use Italian seasonings if you prefer. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my minced garlic and two fresh basil leaves. Uh, I can, you can buy fresh basil leaves at the grocery store. Sometimes they'll sell them. You can store them in the freezer and they'll last for a few months, which is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm doing two cups of broth. 
And again, um, I'm using a bone broth. Um, normally I would make some. That's one of the tasks I'm going to be doing today is actually making a bone broth. Uh, so I'm all out. So I'm using uh, this one. Again, um, you really have to read the labels when you're buying things from the store. I'm using, uh, this is Pacific's uh, bone broth. One more cup I need for this. And um, it's, a, it's a really good broth. The ingredients, again, are all natural. There's not a whole lot of... Um, chemicals or preservatives in this so it makes it really good. So I'm going to go ahead. That is everything. I'm going to just mix it together like I said. So here we go. All mixed together. Now I do need to add my roux which is also going to have my vegetables uh, besides the okra. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my stove and get that going. Okay I've melted my four tablespoons of butter. It's a quarter cup of butter. Uh, I have it over medium heat. I'm going to go ahead. I just added the almond flour and now I'm going to add the coconut flour and then I'm going to mix it all together. So it gets a little pasty but that's okay. This is all about the flavor. I want to try to make sure I don't have any big, big clumps, so I'm going to flatten it out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add my veggies, and I'm going to mix it all in here. Basically, I'm coating the vegetables, so. Again, you don't have to do this step. You certainly will cut out quite a few carbs. I'd say probably about three or four carbs to the dish. If you eliminate this step, you would just put your vegetables all in your crock pot with everything else. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and I'm going to add this to my crock pot. Okay, I added all of the roux and I'm going ahead and I'm mixing everything together. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my slow cooker, uh, put it on low, and I'm going to cook it for about 8 to 10 hours. I'll check it occasionally because sometimes slow cookers, my slow cooker cooks a lot faster than intended. I usually check around the four or six hour point. But the main thing is I want to make sure the chicken is absolutely done because everything else is cooked and you just want the flavors to melt, the vegetables to soften up, and it's going to get thick when I add in my filet powder. So, and that comes near the end. So let me go ahead and get this turned on. And we'll be back to check on it in about six hours. All right, I've let it go for a little more than eight hours. It is close to being ready. I'm going to go ahead right now. I'm going to add, I, I have about a half a pound of shrimp. You can certainly add more if you want to. I'm just doing a half a pound. Let me go ahead and stir those in there. And then I'm going to add the filet, which is just, like I said, sassafras leaves. I'm doing just a um, tablespoon. You don't want to add a whole lot. This will thicken it but I really want to mix this in here. This will help with the start thickening it as well as add it some extra flavor for your gumbo. Now it's all mixed in. What I'm going to do is go ahead and let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes or so, and then it should be ready. All right. It's been 15 minutes roughly since I added the shrimp and the filet powder. Uh, the gumbo is done. It smells delicious. It is, it looks wonderful. Um, this is a gift I'm making for my mother for her birthday, which is tomorrow. So I'm going to let it cool down and bring it on over, um, which is a shame because I really would love to dig in uh, to this. It is wonderful. But the good news is that it's going to my mom. It's going to a good home since my cameraman is allergic to shrimp. So that makes him very sad because he's drooling at the smell. But anyway, one of the things with gumbo is that you serve it over rice. Um, however, if you're low carb, rice really isn't a good option for you. Best alternative for that though is cauliflower rice. So all you need to do is about a half a cup of that, put it right in the center of your bowl, go ahead and pour the gumbo over it and you're all set. You use probably about a three quarter cups of gumbo for with the cauliflower rice, probably a good portion. It's going to be very filling and just tasty as all. So with that, uh, if you enjoy what you see, uh, go ahead and give, give this a try. Hit the subscribe button, uh, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends. And also if you uh, make your own gumbo, what do you like to add to it? What do you like to do with it? How do you make your own roux to go with your gumbo? Put it down in the comment box below. And until then, I'll see you next time.